What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another Lumion 10 feature tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to check out the new paint placement tool that you can use in order, to, in order to quickly place trees and rocks and other things inside of your models to quickly add context to your renderings. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so the example model we're going to use in this tutorial is a 3D warehouse model. It's the Pedregal House Garza Iga Architectos from Andy Didich and uh, you can download this and follow along if you want to and what I've done is I've come through and I've stripped out some of the rocks and uh, the terrain as well because we're just going to take this over into Lumion and so what I want to do is I want to demonstrate kind of how you can use the paint placement tool in order to quickly place things inside of your renderings so to start off I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click the play button on my Lumion live sync and we're going to send this model over to Lumion and so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick a new project and then we'll just go ahead and pick the plane for this example. So we may come in and do some, uh, we may do some stuff with like some terrain in the background just so we can uh, practice painting on that background. But let's go ahead and bring this model in. And so with this model brought in, I don't want to focus as much on the rendering as the new tools. Um, but in this situation, we've brought this model in. Well, now we need to add some context behind it. And so in the past, what you've been able to do is you've been able to go into place mode and under the nature settings you've had options for single placement mass placement and cluster placement and I really like those tools by the way I specifically like the mass placement tool where you can place things in a line however in this particular situation we want to check out this new option which is paint placement and so what paint placement allows you to do is it allows you to select a kind of tree or other object and actually paint it onto the ground so let's say for example that we had some broadleaf trees in here and we'll go ahead and we'll use and so what we're gonna do is I want to add some kind of like tree context in the back of this uh, or back behind this house model and so we're gonna use the new paint placement tool and so what you do is you click on the new paint placement tool and you find a tree that you want to spread back here so in this case I picked the sweet chestnut tree and what you can do is you can click and drag in order to place trees back here and I'm gonna go ahead and pull the density down a little bit just so you can kind of see what this does and then we'll uh, look at this from a couple different levels so if I click and hold and move my mouse you can see how what this is doing is this is painting these trees in the background um, really quickly so it's placing a lot of these trees in the background so you can see how all I have to do is click and drag my mouse in order to do this and one thing I really like about this that looks a little bit weird from back here but it's really smart is as I move forward Lumion is loading in the actual detailed models of those trees as I move forward but as I move backward it's replacing them with these um, low resolution proxy models so what that means is that really kind of saves your performance on your computer when you use this tool when you have a bunch of trees in here and so this tool is literally just for really quickly painting and placing these objects inside of your renderings and so you can adjust the density of the objects that you place in here as well like for example if I place this down to like a 0.1 and click and drag I'm gonna get a lot less trees in here um, if I was to place this up to like one then this is gonna be like a hundred percent coverage so you can see how it's gonna place a ton of trees in here with no real gaps or anything like that and so from what I've seen having watched Lumion's videos um, it seems like the best way to do this the way that makes the most sense and I apologize I'm just erasing these out by the way you click on the trash can and then click and drag in order to erase these out so it's really easy to erase these as well once you've placed them in here you just click and drag um, but from what I've seen what seems to make the most sense from a context standpoint is you want to kind of drag this density down a little bit and when you place this object you want to place this in here but then you want to pick other tree types to kind of fill this in so kind of like an actual forest would be um, so you can see how if I kind of zoom in on these I've got a bunch of this tree in here and it does rotate and also scale these a little bit so they're not exactly the same size so it looks really natural but it seems like what seems to be the most natural is if you kind of drag your density level down and then you come in here and pick some of the uh, smaller trees and kind of fill in the gaps 
So like for example, we've got all of these little trees here. Well now I might add some of these little maple trees um, to kind of fill in the gaps to make this look more natural. So you've got little trees in here and we'll turn the density up on those just a bit. And then you can also come in here with things like rocks or um, bushes or other things like that as well to kind of fill this out. So for example, I can place a bunch of stones in here kind of randomly to really quickly add context to this image. So you can see I can use this to kind of fill this in. So I would place some rocks in here and then I would also come in here with some different kinds of plants. So like for example, if I wanted to place some, some azalea bushes or something, I could do that in here as well. And so you can see how what this does is this really gives you kind of that, uh, that diverse ground covering in here um, that you can use in order to make this really natural. You could also come in with like different grasses, and place a bunch of those grasses really quickly. So just kind of painting this in and making this look a little bit more natural. So you have to think a little bit about kind of what a forest looks like. And then the other cool thing about this is if you ever decide you wanna erase something out, you can come in here and you can see how if I click on this and say erase selected object, it's only gonna erase the object that you have selected. So if I wanna erase out this piece of grass and then maybe use this like black grass instead, um, you can just select those old objects and erase them out using this tool and then add a new object in here using a different one. So it's really easy to add and remove different things in the background here um, without having to do a whole bunch of extra like fine detail work or anything like that. So another cool thing about this uh, tool is it also works on terrain. So if I was to come in here with my landscape tools for example and we'll just kind of add, I need to turn my brush size up a little bit. But we'll just kind of add some mountainous terrain in here. We'll get a little bit in here with a rock and then we'll get some kind of mountainous terrain over here as well. This tool actually works on terrain. So if you wanted to come in, for example, and add or paint like coniferous trees on this terrain, all you would have to do is just find the trees that you want to use, activate the paint placement tool, and then just paint them in here. And you can see how this will add these on whatever surface you want. So it doesn't really matter the steepness or anything like that, but you can use this to quickly add different kinds of trees to terrains um, in order to really quickly do like mountains or other things like that as well. So really this, this tool is really nice because it just lets you fill in all of this stuff kind of randomly without having to do a ton of thinking. I mean, obviously you want to like switch up the kinds of trees that you're putting in here um, so that this looks more natural, but you can see how being able to drop these on terrains um, is a really nice feature. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. One thing I would like to do in the future is doing a video talking about how exactly you kind of combine the different uh, the different things in a forest, like the rocks and the undergrowth and everything like that to make your renderings more realistic. So leave a comment below and let me know what you think both about this feature, but also about that idea for a video in the future. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.